Hello, my name is Maximilian Capraro and I'm a researcher with Friedrich Alexander Universität Erlangen-Nürnberg. With me is Johannes Tigges, a software process consultant from Berlin. And today we want to introduce you to the inner source patterns. We are nearing the end of the first day of this inner source common summit and I think by now we all have a good idea what inner source is about. It's the use of open source methods within a company. And we also heard a lot about the benefit it brings. Increased code quality, faster and definitely more scalable development, happier developers and really much more. But we also heard that it can be challenging to adopt inner source to run an inner source program. Well, fear not. There are many working groups in the inner source commons that are here to help. One example of such a working group is the Learning Path Working Group, where individuals from academia and industry come together to create video segments and articles that introduce inner source. Check them out. Uh, you can find more about this working group on innersourcecommons.org slash learning path. But in this talk, we actually want to talk about another working group, the patterns working group. Now, when we say patterns, don't worry, we don't mean funny, colorful and shiny things on your screen or knitting and sewing patterns, but rather a pattern, as we use the term, is a form of documenting knowledge, documenting problems and solutions, but also documenting the context in which problems and solutions are valid. By that, a pattern structures knowledge in a very specific format. Well, that's a general pattern, but an inner source pattern, that probably doesn't come as a surprise, documents a proven inner source best practice or inner source solution. At the moment, we have documented 26 patterns. Well, so far, 26 and counting. But what is a pattern exactly? Well, each pattern follows a specific format. It's built around a problem and forces that pull this problem in different directions, make it unique or very complicated. These problems and forces, they don't just happen in every organization and in every case at every time, but rather they're happening in a specific context, which a pattern should and have to describe. Well, now to the grand star of the pattern, the solution, it solves the actual problem and moves the situation from the context to a resulting context. And that's the pattern. Now, typically it might have other components like also a good name or a list of offers. Do you remember when I said that the solution is the grand star of the pattern? That was actually, well, half the truth. Because even if you don't have a solution, it can make sense to document problem, forces, a context, maybe even a desired resulting context, to start a discussion and collaborate on that problem. Maybe somebody already has the solution. We call such a pattern a donut pattern. Because, well, like a donut, it has a hole in the middle. That probably was a little bit cryptic, so how about we look at an example pattern. I picked the pattern 30 day warranty. It's offered by Cedric Williams and you can find it in our GitHub repository at github.com slash inner source comments slash inner source patterns. The problem is very simple. A host team receives contributions by guest teams, but the host team is reluctant to accept the contributions. Now, wait, that actually only makes sense in a specific context. 
And this context is that the host team provides a component and many others depend on this component or have an interest in the component. And again, there are these forces we talked about that make the problem a problem that make it unique and tricky. For example, behind that reluctance could be a simple aversion to take responsibility for code that you have not written yourself. It could be that you're just not confident about estimating what is the risk of accepting a contribution. It could also be that you just build up distrust because in the past it didn't work out well with the contributions. Now the solution that this example pattern proposes establish a warranty period. And if during that period a contribution makes trouble, well, then the contributors are responsible for fixing it. Now let's look at the resulting context. That means that the host teams are more willing to receive contributions. It also creates transparency about the expected commitment by contributors. But it also introduces a new risk. It might discourage contributions. I wish I could tell you that I created all of these patterns, but the truth is I did not. Rather, it's these people and many, many others who contributed smaller amounts, who contributed bigger amounts to the patterns. Um, for example, you can see here on the left, Tim, who initially created the patterns movement. And that's just a perfect moment to hand over to Johannes who will explain you a little bit more about the working processes in the Patterns Working Group and how you can become one of the contributors. Thanks for handing over, Max. Becoming a contributor to the Patterns community is similar to other open source projects. We are, however, not producing software, but the Working Group functions otherwise just like an open source project you might already know. So how do you get started? You could start by giving the existing patterns in our repository a read and see what's there and maybe that's already useful to you. Or if you have questions or found of extension opportunities or you want to share your own experience, you're more than welcome to join our Slack channel or interact with us on GitHub. Additionally, We'll be trying a format I'll call Patterns Office Hours, and I'll deal that, detail that a bit later. There's links to all of these opportunities here on the slide, and we're looking forward to having you there. I'll show this slide with all these links again at the end, so don't worry. Um, so how, how does the patterns working process look like? Actually, we're changing the process. We've come up with a few ideas of what might be useful, but we'd be very happy about your input to create something sustainable for everyone. Um, the current process is excellent because it makes sure that things are reviewed very, very properly before they are published. But we want to make the process leaner and attract more contributors. For example, some new contributors might be put off by the existing too large amount of labels. And also we want to enable participation both in a named way and under Chatham House rules. Why is that? Sometimes you just don't want to see your name attached to something, but think your input could lead to a very valuable addition for a community and maybe in the end will even lead to a solution for your own challenges. Hence, we would like to be able to enrich the patterns body with experience and knowledge independent of the need for name participation. Asynchronous interaction with some synchronous elements. Inner source has spread across the globe. We want to enable cross time zone interaction as much as possible and preserve as much content as possible. 
asynchronous interaction also enables participation of more people as well. And being the inner source commons, suggestion asynchronous and text oriented and indexed and uh, linkable collaboration comes natural. Hence, we'll be using our Slack channel and the GitHub project for this. The synchronous elements will be what I will detail later as the patterns of his hours. Working towards a goal makes things easier. And we figured that we come up with two goals for right now. Goal A is to publish a living ebook from our current material. And goal B is to collect and document agreed upon best practices of how to do inner source in the form of patterns ongoing. And we think that regular versioning cycles, a release train, if you will, um, could be useful in the hopes of creating a feeling of progress, achievement uh, for everyone and to allow for easier referencing of patterns in specific states. Also, we hope to leverage the usual automation tools for repetitive um, tasks that are popular in the open source uh, environment already. Right, the patterns office hours are mentioned repeatedly now. What are they? In the past, we've had regular longer calls with notes uh, that were taken and those worked really well. Many of uh, those um, notes were taken by Tim Yao and those were really great and the people that facilitated them were also really great. And we would like to revive something similar. We all know that being able to have a short chat or get some questions answered in a synchronous way can go really a really long way to build the rapport you need for successful asynchronous interaction. Hence, we'll be trying exactly that we'll be trying to make the office hours a place to find answers to these questions that just don't get written down and to tackle the problems that just need that extra bit of bandwidth and over that to get to know each other and to build the rapport that I mentioned before. However, we also want to focus on asynchronous interaction as much as possible using, for example, our GitHub and Slack channel. Um, the inner source commons have grown beyond the EMEA time and America's time zones. Hence, we want to try to enable participation and connection of as many interested people as possible by offering office hours in time slots more welcoming to people in the APEC time zones, for example, because currently we don't have any there. For starts, I think we should go for with alternating um, time zone slots. Um, yeah, but all of this is actually a work in progress and your input and contributions to make this work are more than welcome. Uh, right, so thanks a lot for joining um, us for this talk and please be welcome to interact with us using the links here and with everyone else around the conference and enjoy your time at the conference.